नमस्ते जेवीएम्स मैं सिर्फ कृतिका शर्मारे फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फूड एग्रीकल्चर एंड वेटनरी साइंसेज एंड प्रोसाइजली फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फूड एंड बायोटेक्नोलॉजी सो दिस इज आर एट सेशन फॉर द टॉपिक फूड बिजनेस मैनेजमेंट एंड द टॉपिक शुड बी कवरिंग टुडे इज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन क्लाइमेट सो टॉकिंग अबाउट द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन क्लाइमेट अ बाय प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द कंपनीज कल्चर इज द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन क्लाइमेट the overall tone of the workplace and the morale of the workers and employees are of daily climate workers aptitudes dictate the point the positive or negative uh, atmosphere of the workplace the daily relationships and interactions of employees are indicative of the organizational climate talking about the resources the resources are the people information facilities infrastructure machinery equipment supplies and finances at an organizational disposal people are the paramount resources of all the organization the information facilities machinery equipment materials supplies and finances are supporting non human resources that uh, complement workers uh, in their quest to accomplish the organization's mission statement the availability of the resources and the way that managers value the human and non human resources impact the organization's environment the philosophy of management is a manager's set of personal beliefs and values about people and work such as such as something that the manager can control the manager's leadership styles the number of co-workers involved within a problem solving or a decision making process reflects the manager's leadership style the empowerment means delegating to subordinates uh, decision making authority the freedom knowledge autonomy and skills fortunately most of the organizations and managers are making the move towards the active participation and teamwork that empowerment entails when guided properly and empowered workforce may lead to heightened productivity and quality reduced costs more innovation improved culture service customer service and greater commitment from the employees of the organization in addition response time may improve because information and decision need not be passed up and down the hierarchy empowering employees makes good sense because employees closest to the actual problem can be solved or the customer to the server can make the necessary decisions more easily than a supervisor or manager remote from the scene adapting to the environment now talking about his adaptation to the environment the role of a manager is to monitor and shape the internal and external environments and to anticipate changes and react quickly to them the manager can monitor the environment through boundary spanning which is a process of gathering information about developments that could impact the future of the organization managers can access information through variety of sources such as customer and supplier feedback that is professional trade and government publications uh, or industry associations and personal contact the managers can also actively work to influence the external environment through lobbying voting and use of media to influence public opinion the internal elements comprise the organization itself the internal change arises from activities and decisions within the organization the managers can gather information by conducting a thorough evaluation of the internal operations of the organization the purpose of this internal analysis is to identify the organizational assets resources skills and the processes that represent either strength or weaknesses the strengths are aspects of the organization's operation that represent potential competitive advantages any aspect of the organization that distinguishes it from its competitors in a positive way while weaknesses Well, that area are areas that are need in need of the improve. Several key areas of the organization's operation should be examined in an internal analysis. The key areas of the assess include the marketing, financial, research and development, 
production and general management capabilities these areas are typically evaluated in terms of the extent to which they foster quality and support the competitive advantage sought by the organization quite literally the organizations operate by people making decisions a manager plans organizes starts leads and controls her team by executing decisions the effectiveness and quality of those decisions determine how successful a manager will be the managers are constantly called upon to make decisions in order to solve problems decision making and problem solving are ongoing processes of evaluation situation or problems considering alternatives making choices and following them with the necessary actions some of the decision making process is um extremely short and mental reflection is essentially instantaneous in other situation the process can drag on for a week or even months the decision making uh, process involves the following steps that is defining the problem identifying limiting factors develop potential alternatives analyze the alternatives select the best alternative implement the decision and establish a control and evaluation system the decision making process begins with the manager identify the real problem the acute definition of the problem affects all the steps that follow if the problem is inaccurately defined every step in the decision making process will be based on the incorrect starting point one way that the manager can help determine the true problem in a situation is by identifying the problem separately from its symptoms the most obvious tub trouble situations found in an organization can usually be identified as symptoms of underlying problems um these symptoms all indicate that something is wrong with an organization but they don't uh, identify the root causes a successful manager does not just attack symptoms but he works to uncover the factors that cause these symptoms if there are low profits and declining sales then the underlying problem can be the market poor market research if there are high cost then the underlying problem can be poor design process or poorly trained employees if there's a la- low morale of the employees then there's a lack of communication between the management and subordinates if the high employee turnover then the rate of pay is too low or the job design is not suitable now when we talk about identifying limiting factors all managers want to make the best decision so to do so the managers need to have the ideal resources that is information time personnel um equipment and supplies and identify and limit any limiting factors realistically managers operate in an environment that normally doesn't provide ideal resources for example they may lack the proper budget or may not have the most accurate information or any extra time so they must choose to satisfy that is to make the best decision possible with the information resources and the time available the time pressure frequently causes a manager to move forward after considering only the first and the most obvious answers however successful problem solving requires thorough examination of the challenge and a quick answer may not result in a permanent solution one of the best known methods for developing alternatives is to brainstorming where a group works together to generate ideas and alternative solutions the assumption behind brainstorming is that the group dynamic stimulates thinking one person's ideas no matter how outrageous can generate ideas from the others in a group ideally this spawning of the ideas is contagious and before long lots of suggestions and ideas flow brainstorming usually requires 30 minutes to an hour now what is nominal group technique this method involves the use of a high structured meeting complete with an agenda and restricts discussion or interpersonal communication during the decision making process this technique is useful and because it is ensures that every group method has equal input in the decision making process it also avoids some of the pitfalls such as pressure to confirm 
group dominance, hostility, mm -hmm. and conflict that can plague a more interactive, spontaneous, unstructured forum such as brainstorming. But what is this style by technique? With this technique, the participants can never meet, but a group, a group leader uses written questionnaires to conduct the decision making. No matter what technique is used, group discussion making has clear advantage and disadvantage when compared with individual decision making. The following are among the advantages, such as group provides a broader perspective, employees are more likely to be satisfied and to support the final decision. The opportunities for discussion help to answer questions and reduce uncertainties for the decision makers. These points are among the disadvantages. This method can be more time consuming than one individual making the decision on his own. The decision reached would be a compromise rather than an optimal solution. The individuals become guilty of the group think that is the tendency of the members of a group to conform to the prevailing opinions of the group. The group may have difficulty performing tasks because the group rather than a single individual makes the decisions resulting in confusion where it comes time to implement and evaluate the decision. The results of dozen individuals versus the group performance studies indicate that group not only tends to make better decisions than a person acting alone, but also that group tends to inspire star performance to even higher levels of productivity. So are two heads better than one? The answer depends on several factors such as the nature of the task, the ability of the group members and the form of interaction. Because a, mem because a manager often has a choice between making a decision independently or including others in the decision making, she needs to understand the advantage and disadvantage of the group making decision. So, Let's now talk about the analyze the alternative. The purpose of this step is to decide the relative merits of each idea. The manager must identify and uh, the advantage and disadvantage of each alternative solution before making a final decision. Evaluating the alternatives can be done in a numerous ways. Here are the few possibilities, such as determine the pros and cons of each alternative, then um, weigh each factor's important in importance in the decision, ranking each alternative relative to its ability to meet each other, and then multiply by probability factor to provide a final value for each alternative. Regardless of the method used, a manager needs to evaluate each alternative in terms of its feasibility, like how can it be done? Can it be done or not? Then effectiveness, how well does it resolve the problem situation? and the consequences, like what will it be cost that, to the organizations. Select the best alternatives after the manager. After the manager has analyzed all the alternatives, she needs to decide on the best one. The best alternative is that one that produces the most advantages and a few serious disadvantages. Sometimes the selection process can be fairly straightforward, such as the alternative with the most pros and fewer cons. Other times, the optimal solution is a combination of several alternatives. Sometimes the best, the best alternative may not be obvious. That's why a manager must decide which alternative is the most feasible and effective, coupled with which carries the lowest cost to the organization. Probability estimates the analysis of each alternative chances of success takes place often comes into play at this point in the decision-making process. In those cases, a manager simply selects the alternatives with the highest probability of success. Now, talking about the implement, implementing the decision. The managers are paid to make decisions, but they are also paid to get results from these decisions. The positive results must follow decisions. Everyone involved in the decision must know his or her role in ensuring a successful outcome. To make certain that employees understand their roles, managers must thoughtfully devise programs, procedures, rules, or policies to help aid them in this problem-solving process.
now establish a current control and evaluation system the ongoing action needs to be monitored and evaluation system should provide feedback on how well the decision is being implemented what the results are and what the adjustments are necessary to get the results that were intended when the solution was chosen in order for a manager to evaluate his decisions he need to gather information to determine its effectiveness was the original problem resolved if not is he closer to the decision desired situation than he was in the beginning of the decision making process the manager may accomplish this by asking different questions which we will be seeing in the next session so that is all for this session thank you